Welcome to Kaiser Watch with John Kaiser. I'm your host, Jim Goddard. John, what's coming up on the show today? Jim, today we're going to talk about two favorites and a bottom fish that didn't quite make it to the favorite collection for this year, but which is uh, looks like it might make it in the next few weeks. Has Brunswick Exploration started drilling yet on any of its lithium projects? Brunswick put out a very interesting uh, update on Monday where it indicated that drilling is now underway on the Anatakao Anatakao West project, which is just to the east of All Chems Galaxy CYR project. Uh, And they've got a 3,000 meter program plan. They're going to start with a a fence of five angled holes, uh, 50 meters from the boundary, and then step out and do uh, two fences, 150 and 300 meters to the east. Now, my intel has picked up that they actually started drilling uh, roughly a week earlier than this Monday. And given that these are going to be fairly fairly sh- uh, short holes uh, 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 to, to see if this pegmatite that Alchem has been chasing right up to the border projects onto their property, I thought it was kind of interesting that they had added 1,000 meters for that extra line of uh, 300 meter step out from, from the first line. That to me tells me they may already have confirmed that, yes, indeed, there is a pegmatite projecting onto the uh, on, onto their Anatakao West property, and it's probably big and interesting enough that it is likely to continue at least 300 meters to the east. So that is looking very good. It'll probably take several weeks to, to get that done. And this isn't going to be a huge pegmatite, but all came for some reason, which overlooked the fact that this loose end was existing there to the east, uh, has been drilling on its side of the boundary. In fact, the drill rig that was supposed to go to uh, to, to, to Brunswick, uh, they decided to keep it, but Brunswick managed to get it from another junior with a property to the north where they're drilling a totally blind uh, resistivity anomaly. They decided to let's wait and see uh, rather than spend the money on this blind target now. But from reading between the lines and the way they crafted this news release, Anataka West is no longer just a blind target. They're drilling it now because this is a swampy area. Uh, so, and because of the swamp, there's no outcrop. But I've got my fingers crossed that Anataka West is going to deliver something interesting, which uh, Alchem will probably want to add to its uh, Galaxy project. Now, they also gave out some very interesting information about the Plex project, which they have optioned from Osisco Gold Royalties. And this is a property which Virginia Gold drilled between 2006 and 2012, and then it ended up uh, being spun out when the Elliot, when when Virginia Gold was taken over for the uh, Eleanor Gold discovery by Gold Corp, and uh, Virginia Mines ended up with this, and Virginia Mines ended up eventually being bought by Osisco Gold Royalties, which ended up with all these properties uh, in in their portfolio. And as part of the uh, listing of Virginia Mines, they did complete a technical report on what's now called the Plex property, and at the time they were focused on something called the the Orphe the Orphe Gold Zone, and uh, it it never really panned out to become anything significant. But the uh, technical report describes all these uh, pegmatite uh, intervals that were drilled through on the way to getting into the uh, gold mineralized system. And and these these pegmatites, uh, they tend to occur in the proximity of the structural zones where also these gold orogenic gold deposits are present. There's no genetic relationship between gold mineralization and the pegmatites. The pegmatites are spawned by nearby granitoids that end up exploiting these zones of weakness. But the whole big story for the uh, whole James Bay region is all these areas that were once explored for orogenic gold and in the James Bay region just hasn't, you know, delivered evidence of a serious gold endowment. But all these pegmatites that were nearby and, and they didn't even bother to, 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 to properly log them, definitely not to assay them. Uh, these are all becoming the focus for juniors who happen to have these 
these former gold projects. They're now taking a fresh look at it. And uh, during, uh, uh, j just before PDAC, Brunswick sent a chopper up to the property. Apparently, it just had a pilot in it. They wanted to see if the core shack was still standing. Uh, yes, indeed, it was. They went in. Oh, the core box is all there. Nobody went in there and tipped them over and, and wrecked them. Uh, they did not have a geologist along to go and log anything, but they've now said that uh, within a couple of weeks, they will send a crew, a sampling crew, which will be geologists and people skilled at splitting the core and, and bagging the samples. The, I talked to Killian Charles, and he says they do not at this stage know if these pegmatite intervals are, are LCT type, that they're fertile. So the first thing they'll do is go in there with their, their XRF gun and run it along these uh, pegmatite intervals. And if they start clicking with the right ratios of um, Pathfinder minerals, then the sampling, then the, the geologists will start logging the core. And then the, the, the sample people will start splitting it and bagging it and hauling it out uh, for, for assaying. And the next sort of important news release out of that is that, yes, we have submitted uh, you know, lots and lots of sample bags of this core because it is the right type. We want to see what the assays are. And they're, they're doing this right now, even though there's a chance they may all be barren. They sent the whole crew out there because this would save them an awful lot of time because we're going to be heading into a spring thaw in a couple months and nobody wants to do anything up there. So when June, July rolls around, uh, uh, most of the companies, and this was originally uh, Brunswick's predicament with Plex, they're going to go out into the field and start walking the ground, prospecting, figuring out where exactly the pegmatites are outcropping and figure out where there should be a drill program uh, sometime in the fall. And then, you know, if they start hitting something, they can, of course, drill right, right through winter if they set up a, a winterized camp, such as groups like Winsome have done with Andina and Patriot Battery Metals with Corvette. But the, the, the interesting part about this press release is that they uh, – said that there were 18 drill intersections of pegmatite over 50 meters in length, and there were 96 over 8 meters in length, and that they stretch over a 1,300-meter uh, strike of, of pegmatite. So if this is confirmed as LCT-type pegmatite and the grades end up being good, they will be able to put start planning, uh, uh, their, their, get their drill pads permitted, uh, you know, within a month or so, and uh, start redrilling this from the perspective of delineating a pegmatite body rather than what Virginia was doing, which was the Orphe, uh, Orphe orogenic gold system. And they also indicated that uh, everything appears to be in place for drilling to start at the Hearst project in, in Ontario. And there they've got an outcropping uh, Pegmatite, that's clearly a LCT fertile, uh, 65 meters of strike exposed, about 22 meters wide. They're only planning 1,000 meters for this, for what they call the decoy uh, a pegmatite right now. But that should be enough to give us a sense of uh, how much strike there is to it, how wide it is, and perhaps uh, how deep it extends. And then, of course, uh, the next stage, uh, they plan to be drilling the, uh, the, the Hanson Lake pegmatites in Saskatchewan that they picked up from Searchlight. So that's coming probably in June. And they already know those are LCT type. They don't know if the ones to the north, the Jan Lake pegmatites are that, but they'll be looking at that also also in early summer to see if uh, Saskatchewan will end up on the map. And we talked about that last year. So Brunswick, uh, they, they've closed all, almost all of the financing. There's just one bit that they are waiting to close at the end of this month. So they're all cashed up with $16 million and they've started drilling and the body language and the wording of the press release says they have something interesting showing up in the core at Anakatau West and uh, we'll be waiting to see what the Plexa uh, pegmatites that Virginia drilled are all about and then Hearst will be up to see if there's something interesting in Ontario that they need to pursue further. It's been a month since Neo Bay rejected assay results for the Crevier project and asked the lab to redo them. Should Neo Bay shareholders be worried about that? Well, this week the market started to become worried about. Uh, it's been 
a month now since they, more than a month since they put out the press release on February 13th that they had received assays, but there was something wrong with them. They had sent them back to the lab, and I heard they've also sent uh, uh, an interval off to uh, to another lab that they had been using for the James Bay project uh, in in Ontario, where they knew that the results were were were, were consistent and reliable. So when we're not hearing anything, uh, uh, I mean the the the, the, the samples have already been pulverized uh, and uh, and put in bags, and so they just need to take another split from that and do the geochemical assay. It's not like you have the uh, bottleneck, uh, the, the prep the prep stage uh, bottleneck to deal with. So the, the market has been uh, a little nervous this week. The only person that doesn't seem to be nervous is the CEO Jean Sebastian David, and. He became the CEO in, uh, in, in 2022, took over for Claude Dufresne, and he started off with about 900,000 shares. And since then, he's bought over a half million shares to own just over 1.4 million shares. And he's done this in the open market. Um, he stopped buying in late October last year after they had sort of finished with the, uh, the, the fall drill program on the Crevier project, uh, where the idea was to see if there was something more to the existing main zone, which is about 41 million tons of uh, 1,900 uh, ppm niobium pentoxide and 241 uh, ppm tantalum. Um, and the, the drilling ended up hitting something very interesting several kilometers to the west under Lactulati, a, a, a very different assemblage of mineralization. Pyrochlor crystals are visible in it, but there's all, all sorts of other stuff. And uh, what, what has happened is since he put out that press release on February 13th and then resubmitted for assay, he ended up outside of whatever blackout period he was. And he has been in the market buying stock between 17 cents and 22 cents. Uh, he's accumulated an additional 151,000 shares. Now, what's interesting about Niobay is that during this period since the start of last year, only one other insider has reported buying stock in Niobay. And that was a director, and he stopped in October. And I've talked to a number of people, both who are directors and who are close to the company, and ask them about this uh, these four interesting holes under under Lactulati, which uh, ended up almost starting in mineralization and bottomed at a 350 meter depth. Uh, that they've basically outlined a, a tonnage footprint of about you know 500 million tons, which is huge. Within that, there could be uh, 10 or so um, 50 million 50 million ton zones, and all of them are intrigued, but none of them are jumping up and brimming with excitement that uh, Niobay is sitting on a significant new discovery. Uh, the only person who seems to think that there is something special going on there is the CEO. And he admits that at this point, although when he shoots it with the XRF gun, you get a spot here on the core that kicks over 1% ni niobium and even some rather high tantalum values until you get a geochemical assay, which, which uh, is for the average of each, each uh, one to two meter interval and then average it out over the whole core length. You really don't know what sort of beast that you are sitting with. So just about everybody else is sort of saying, well, let's wait for proper assays to see what you have. But he thinks they have discovered a dimension that's completely different to this uh, giant uh, alkaline complex, uh, and and this is on the margins uh, from the uh, of, of a um, magnetic low. The whole thing is shaped like a banjo. It shows up in the government mag. It's quite interesting, but it's in an area that has never seen any any interest. It's different from the nepheline cyanide mineralization that hosts the, the main zone. And I, 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 I contacted him this week and he said, no, we do not yet have any assays. Uh, the, the market's just, uh, you know, worried. Uh, but what I, what, what I think he's seeing in this is he's already making arrangements for a substantial follow-up drilling. He has um, done a, an agreement with the local First Nation. It has a very complicated name, Pikua Akamiul Nuach. 
and they're all on board. They hope this is real, and they look looking forward to the jobs. So I I continue to be optimistic that we're going to see something in these numbers that suggests that this zone under Lactulati, which has a different mineralization style than the than the late stage Nephilim cyanite hosted dike that has been the focus of all the historical work, and that within this we're going to see enough evidence of high grade to justify uh, a major program and optimism that there's going to be something bigger and richer than they have at James Bay, which continues to be stalled with these uh, negotiations with the Moose Cree First Nation about whether or not they want to have a mine in their backyard. So I'm still optimistic. It's still a favorite in my mind. Uh, and we may not get some monster 200-meter hole of, 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 of 5,000 ppm niobium pentoxide that makes everybody say, oh, another Niobec taking shape. We may get something that's a little bit more complicated, but I would be biased to expect that the, the results are going to be on the, this is better than the uh, you know, 2000, 1900, 2000 ppm cyanite uh, dica that's been the main zone, where, which also has metallurgical issues and just really doesn't make it uh, at the niobium and tantalum prices that we have today. Last year, you talked often on Kaiser Watch about bottom fish rated tower resources, but it never made your 2023 favorites collection. The stock has nearly tripled during the past month. What's going on there? I originally had tower resources as a bottom fish at the end of 21, headed into 2022, because the company was focused in central British Columbia on the Nechaco project, where Stu Averill had been doing till sampling, chasing these grains that were suggestive of a uh, SK Creek style VMS system somewhere in that area. But during 2021, uh, they also had this Rabbit North property, which is a very large project, uh, sort of halfway between the Afton Mine and the Highland Valley Copper Mines uh, in southern British Columbia. Uh, this had seen a lot of work since the uh, 70s by, by various juniors, and there had been interesting copper intersections, but nothing ever really hung together to create sort of, okay, here we have a you know 400 million ton deposit that's potentially open pitable. And they were trying to farm this out to majors, and the majors sort of said, ah, go do some more, give us some more geochemical data for this project, and then we'll take a harder look at maybe farming farming into it. And so Joe Dami, the CEO of, uh, of, of Tower, uh, gave Stu Averill the green light to do a till sampling program, which is, of course, Stu's specialty. And that resulted in, in 2021 in the Dominic Lake train, which was this uh, previously unrecognized train of gold, gold grains emanating from an area west of the Duran stock. And they did a drill program in late late 2021. And uh, one of the holes looked so interesting. Stu actually rushed it uh, for assaying. We got those assays in early, early uh, 2022. And that really sparked my attention because they named this the lightning, lightning zone. This was an orogenic gold system. And they've since age dated the this mineralization uh, based on the the nearby uh, quartz feldspar porphyry uh, uh, dikes that are present that seem to be related and so it's about 149 million years old which is younger than the 215 million year age that has been the, assigned to the uh, copper porphyry intrusions that have been the historical focus of exploration on the property so this was something new and different than last year. You know, I had multiple Kaiser Watch episodes talking about this. I thought this was always on the threshold of turning into a, uh, you know, Kaiser favorite uh, pro graduation uh, story. Uh, and at first they chased the zone in a northeast uh, direction because they assumed that was destruction. When those results didn't quite make sense, they came up with this north-south orientation and they, they did some step outs to the north and the, the, what they intersected looked very similar to the initial discovery hole mineralization. When they stepped to the south, they ended up finding this blind diorite plug, which is related to the Durant stock uh, uh, to the east and also you know, 200 million plus years old. And this kind of was like a big obstacle in the way of this north-south uh, shear structural zone, which the orogenic fluids had exploited when they came up, but this created a tighter 
tighter type of uh, structural setting, so it wasn't a good host for dropping out mineralization. And when they got the assays back late in the year for the northern holes, uh, there were sulfides, but there wasn't any really interesting gold. So what we ended up with was this sort of strange puddle, the lightning, so the lightning zone. We had the lightning puddle of gold mineralization and not really clear, you know, okay, where, where's this zone going to grow to? And but and that's why the stock tanked down to 10 cents. And uh, I just said, okay, um, this is, uh, you know, obviously not a candidate to be promoted to the 2023 favorites. But since they did some more till sampling and demonstrated that there was a, uh, a train to the west that they call the central, the central train, and evidence that there's even something farther west going on, all of which ties up with 10, 20 kilometers down ice, They've got a spray of values uh, which don't hook up to the main Dominic train. And, uh, and, 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 and so this suggests, well, there may be some parallel structures that are also mineralized with this orogenic gold that sh that's been shed and transported. And so I kept it as a bottom fish, and they mounted a, uh, a, a seven-hole drill program very early this year. They started with this central train, which is, uh, you know, 500 meters or so to, to the west of the lightning structure. And uh, the first hole hit something. The second hole uh, did not hit anything. And, and Stu Averill realized, oh, my interpretation of this sort of north northeast structural trend is incorrect. Uh, and that was, of course, based on the fact that this was the trend of the valley. And valleys usually uh, represent structural zones of weakness. So they went back to a north-south um, uh, orientation and, and stepped out with the the third hole and got a very juicy intersection about 300 meters to the south and they did another one at 65 65 degree angle and that got even better and 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 Stu put out this press release on on March 1st just ahead of PDAC talking about I have this is the best you know early stage uh, exploration hole for gold that I have seen in my career and that got the market going and the stock which has sort of crept back to 20 cents on you know evidence that a drill program was actually underway again on, on the rabbit north project uh, it popped up to 40 cents and it's been sort of churning here in the 40 42 cent range and the assay labs are no longer as clogged as they were at least in British Columbia for Britain British Columbia so they're expecting assays for at least these uh, first three holds uh, perhaps by 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 early by early April and if they confirm that this is a very well mineralized gold system this becomes a new discovery the stock will likely take off from the current level and the reason they're so optimistic about the, what they now call the thunder zone is that the the grains that they're picking up in the, in, in, the, in the central train they're much coarser up to 300 microns versus the 50 micron trains that characterize the Dominic uh, Lake train train to the east and plus when they look at the core they can see these rare visible gold specks the lightning mineralization never had one iota of, of visible gold in it so they're pretty optimistic that this will run gold. The question is, what sort of grades over what widths? But what's, they published core photos, and what has them so excited about this uh, play is that the core is much busier than in the um, lightning lightning zone area, much more pyrotization, much more veining. Uh, so, so obviously this thing had may have had multiple phases of, of, of mineralizing fluids coming through, dropping out a lot more sulfide. And in this setting, the sulfide is associated with the gold mineralization. So watch this for the next couple of years. I shouldn't be talking about it on Kaiser Watch because it is part of the bottom fish collection, but, but my readers have already been reading about it. I published a tracker this week which maps it all out, what to expect. So stay tuned for Tower Resources and as rabbit north project where the uh, story has been revived with the new thunder zone uh, starting to explain what the central train is all about john thank you so much for the update you're welcome jim we've been speaking with john kaiser i'm jim goddard comments made on kaiser watch are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any manner whatsoever as a recommendation to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time archived online at kaiserresearch.com.